Okay. So we're just going to get started here. Um, thank you so much for joining us on this Saturday morning as you're going to learn about um, vertical uh, planting or decorating uh, for your home. Uh, my name is Karina. I am the visual manager here at Chalet. Um, pretty much uh, the displays that you see out there, that's, that's what I kind of create um, for you to just to create that experience. So uh, I'm just going to show you a couple of things that I take in consideration when I'm creating that display for you. Um, so hopefully some of those tips will help you out. So, you know, vertical uh, gardening, vertical uh, planting or decoration, whatever you want to call it, you know, the, the main thing that we want with that is a little bit of contrast. So if you look back here, I already have some um, hanging planters for you. And you always want to create um, like a, a taller, shorter. You always want to create something like that. So. And these macrames, they come in uh, two different lengths. You'll get the long one and you get the short one. Um, but you also want plants that are going to trail. So uh, one of the ones that I brought here, if you're not familiar with Hoyas, um, I know a lot of people use ivy just because you're able to get that trading effect, but there's other plants that can offer that for you. So one of my favorites is the Hoya. So if you have not, um, get, get yourself very familiar with it. So this is just a six inch guy. Um, the pots are sold separate. So I just picked whatever pot I thought was best. This does have a drainage hole down here and we'll talk about water in just one second. Uh, this one right here with the fern, uh, which I love ferns because they offer volume and that's something too. So it's not just about the trailing, but you want that flourish volume as well. You want that kind of effect. Um, this one has a saucer already. So when it, it's pretty easy when it comes to watering. Um, but let's talk about the macrame because I know that's something that, you know, was very popular before and everything comes back. Um, here's more of a natural ones with the beads. Um, we do offer just basic ones that come by themselves and they come in different colors. I have blues, blacks, whites, uh, whatever it is that you might like to kind of create that effect for you. We can definitely help you out with that. But let's there, we also have pots that already come with their um, macrame, such as this one right here. Um, and, and it has drainage, so it's always perfect right there. So this is a Pothos, Golden Pothos, um, six inch, and he fits perfectly right in there. And Pothos are really great because they, again, they, they're gonna wanna trail. So this guy, you know, uh, you can see already starting and he's just gonna kind of keep going this way. So he'll give you a nice little full volume right here, but he's also gonna offer that for you. So here's the little rope that he comes with. Here's the, the hanging macrame. Get him in there. So plants have a certain way that they want to just naturally grow. And you're going to have to kind of, just to make it look more natural, you're, you're going to have to go along with that. You could definitely train them to trail certain ways in certain areas or directions. But for the most part, I always try to kind of play with its own natural flow that it's going. So be careful, be gentle when you're putting them in these macrame um, hanging ropes um, that you don't tear off your leaves. You, know, you don't want to damage any of that. So I just want to make sure that he's in there before I lift them. Kind of train them in there. And there you go. And these already come with the pot. So it's very easy to just kind of create this right here. So. Um, if you have any questions, just um, kind of keep a tab of them. Uh, I'll answer everything towards the end. So that way we can have a quick little powwow, you could say, to answer all that um, in case I missed it. So again, Hoyas, ferns, pothos, ivies, you know, things like that definitely uh, will offer that volume that and that look that we're trying to create. Um, another thing is also like wall planters. So the ones that you see out here, this little set right here, um, they're all sold individually, but I wanted to create different things for them. So here's the popular ivy again. That's the one that's always going to give you that length right there. I popped in a little jewel orchid. It's about to bloom, actually. It's beautiful. Um, this one right here, I'm going to get off the wall. This one is actually, I, we have basil, curly parsley, and dill. So you could even do your herbs in one of these containers. So this one's pretty nice because it actually slides off. So if I need to water it or take it somewhere, very easy to do. And then once it's dry, then pop it back in. So if you have a nice little sunny spot or if you're looking to do something like this in your kitchen, I think an herb garden would be a, a great um, idea, a great addition to that. Um, the other thing I also did, if you can tell from, 
in the camera or not, but this is actually, these guys are silk. So these are not real plants. So if you feel that you want that look, but you're just not, uh, you don't have a green thumb, don't worry. We have a great collection of silks. Um, I just added a little pop of orange begonia there just to kind of go with the macrame there. Uh, made in hair fern, a little sage. And the thing is when you're working with silks or um, these people, faux flowers, plastic, whatever it is that you like to call them, we address them as silks. Um, is that you really want to shape them. So, you know, when they come out of the box, they come this way. So it really takes some, you know, a little manipulation. Um, they have wires in them. So feel free to bend them uh, to the direction that you're going for. So I wanted this to give me a little bit of trailer, um, but also a little filler. The, the begonia is my showpiece. And my um, sage right here is just more of a filler. It's just to kind of make everything kind of blend in. But this is the guy who's kind of, uh, again, ferns just offer that look right there. So that's a silk right there. Um, so faux can also work for your wall. Let's see. Okay, so I'm just going to change this guy up a little bit. I'm going to bring you a different container. And these are some of the ones that you've seen out there. So I started this one already for you. This one had 12 slots. Um, it does not have drainage. So I'm going to show you right now how to, how to do that. But I picked items that kind of are going to be happy together. So you don't want one that you don't want a cactus that doesn't want to be watered with a uh, calathea that wants to keep moisture. So it's very, it's just easier to try to get something that's going to be happier and wants the same. Um, all these calatheas right here that I have for you, some of the African violet, I have ferns right here, all that likes moisture. Um, it wants to be in a nice little humidity, not soggy. There's a big difference right there. So um, they would totally be happy. I would definitely just try to get this one off the wall, water it, let it dry before you put it back on your wall. So that's one thing to always remember. Um, you don't want water stains on your wall once you take that off. So I'm going to plant these two that are left and I'm going to hang it for you so you can see it. I did put ivy there just because um, they're going to give me that training look, but these calatheas right here and the ferns are the ones that are giving me that little movement. And then the, the little African violets, just a little pop of colors right there. And the foliage can be interesting too once there's done blooming. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is when you don't have drainage on any kind of pottery uh, containers, you wanna make sure that you put uh, gravel on the bottom. And this is gonna prevent the, your roots from rotting out when you water. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna throw some stones at the bottom just a little bit, about a quarter inch is what you want. And then I'm gonna add some soil. There you are, you see it a little bit better. That's fine. A little bit of soil, get it started. So I already have my two plants that I want in this area. So I have a variegated ivy, which again is gonna give me some more trailing. And I have a begonia right here. So as you can tell, I stay with like the purples and pinks on this one. Any excess soil, just kind of get that out and just rub it off. Just throw it here. Just be gentle with those, those roots right here. So when you're trying to get your excess soil out, just rub it. And then he's going to go in here. Add the extra soil. And then the ivy. I would definitely get into some kind of watering schedule when you have um, a wall planter like that. So you know exactly when to the, it's just a little bit more hard work, but I think it's a definitely worth the effort. Um, it definitely creates, it's almost like an artwork at your wall. So you definitely want to invest some time in it. And what I did here, if you could see, I already put moss on the ones that I did earlier. This is just Spanish moss. Um, it's going to keep the humidity in for me, but it's also once I uh, hang it on the actual wall, um, is going to help kind of keep everything in for me. 
So that way, you know, nothing's spilling out, anything like that. So that's what you want to make sure. So I got these guys in where I wanted them. And I'm just going to finish it with the um, Spanish moss. And just complete the look. You just pull it apart. All of my plants were well watered and well drained. So this guy is perfectly fine to go up there. And I'm just going around the plant. You don't have to make it so heavy. You want you want it to breathe, but it's again, it's just more to help it stay in there. So put up cleaning. And you can do this with succulents if you like. Um, they don't they don't take a lot of water, so you can definitely do that. I just wanted something that's gonna give me more of a movement uh, rather than I feel sometimes succulents are just so um, not stiff, but they you know they, they're not moving around like some of these guys are. Calatheas, they're they're always doing something, so it's awesome. So I'm just gonna show you what that guy looks like. I'm just trying to get the soy off it. You'll see this guy right here. You see the roots coming on the opposite side. As soon as he gets to a wall, he's going to want to gravitate and get stuck to that. So see what I mean by movement? I just wanted something that's going to be, this definitely looks alive and that's what you're kind of you're looking for for that. So let me hang this guy up for you. Okay. Let's see if we can fix that just a tiny. So there you are, you got the few pops of color. Not everything has to be so out. So that's why these ferns, you know, they're pretty low um, on there. And then the moss, you really don't see it, but I mean, from here, it, it blends in really well. You can't really see the moss from there. So this would definitely take off. This right here as well can definitely go that way. So give yourself some options when you're doing something like that. It doesn't always have to be the same ingredients. Try to find something. Um, I just, I love calathea. So I usually lean to um, plants like that and um, just wants to be kind of happy with it. So that's a nice little wall one right there. I'm gonna take these guys down and I'm gonna show you a different, different option here. I like options. So uh, back to where we talk about folds for a little bit again. Um, it doesn't have to be necessarily a container that, you know, like a regular pot container that you think you want to plant or put your greens in there. So uh, we actually have these baskets that I love. Great color. So this is a silk fern and I wanted it to be dramatic. I, I wanted that look right here because this is already give me this triangle shape. I want to go around right here, kind of frame it. So this is a silk fern that is just in the basket, no fuss. Again, you can bend these guys however you want. Remember that everything that, that is silk has wires in it. So make sure you manipulate it to, to whichever direction you want. So I'm just gonna hang this guy here. And we also have some silk succulents, like these little trailers right here. So that's pretty awesome. I'm just gonna stick them right here. Just give me that length, give me that trail that you want from your natural plants. You could definitely try to create it with your full plants as well. So that's some of the looks that you see that we, we're creating as we're getting our silks back in again. So, yeah. and then the, Basket also comes in a smaller version. So this is what I have. Again, I'm sticking with the orange for a little bit. This are uh, faux kumquats uh, with a fern here on the side. So not much has to be done to it. I just wanna make sure that you get that little flowiness right here. And shape it, bend it, however you want. You feel that you want to see them more down here or if you want more of a volume here but again it's just for more of a pop of color so if i had those two baskets together i think this one might be too high i just want to make sure you see it 
there. So something like that will be great together. So it doesn't have to be all these macrames hanging from, from, from your ceiling. It doesn't have to be actual containers. They sometimes could be too heavy. If you're looking for something a little lighter, I think baskets can definitely offer a little something. Just can't put that one there for right now. So nice little gray story that we have right there. Um, I just wanna make sure it looks good for you. All right. Now, uh, other plants that can offer that uh, vertical gardening that you're looking for um, are aeroids, and I'll get to those in a minute. But uh, before I forget, uh, when you're creating a space in your home, let's say, I always try to pick a corner, and that's where I want the longest. I'm, I'm trying to go with the natural line of the space that I'm using. So let's say you're, you know, you're you're in a corner and you want to create something right here. I'm always going to put the longest item right here, just because it's going to go naturally with that line, and then just make it shorter as I go, because um, that's going to give you variations, and that's what I'm always trying to create for you guys uh, when you come in and, and you see our displays. I just want to give you as many options as possible. So that's something that I would take in consideration. I actually would put this basket somewhere right here i would like for them to be together i wouldn't separate if you have stuff that matches try to put it closer together rather than polka dot it all the way around you want to keep things like when you saw the octagon containers it was just one little grouping that they were there and it's just easier to read that way and it just looks cleaner okay um get these guys down let's talk about aeroids because um it doesn't Vertical planting doesn't mean that it's just something that's hanging right here. It could also come up from the ground, and that's what I want to show you right now. So you could put full flowers in these baskets, especially in the spring or summer. You could do just floral work on here, or some silks, and that I think will be beautiful. So if you get something neutral like a basket like this, you can use it every season. Um, I could I could definitely do a Christmas um, arrangement with this very very easily. Um, in the fall. So pick something that, that you're going to get your money's worth um, uh, with your, or when you're thinking of doing something like this. Um, definitely loving this right here, but we're going to bring it down. And then let's say, so I'm just going to put my picture up here, right? Sometimes you have artwork, you have pictures of your family, you have other things that are going on when, when you're creating that wall. Make sure you're straight. There you go. Okay. So whether it be a mirror, whether it be anything that will be more like a focal point, you want to center that and then you, I would create um, all the greenery around it. But right now we're going to talk about aeroids, which is I have two of them here for you. This beautiful. Right here. Okay, and then I have a golden pocos for you in a totem as well. The great thing that these guys add is that they're actually going to keep on growing. As you can tell, this guy right here, he's already passed where his support trailer is. So he's gonna wanna get up on that wall. Um, I don't recommend nails if you could use command hooks when you're trying to trail your, um, your plants, whether it's your ivy or whatever it is, but you're looking to create that line, definitely use command hooks because you're, A, you don't see them, and B, you're able to move the plant easier. I feel that sometimes nails, if the plant's growing and you're not keeping an eye on it, it can actually just hurt the leaf. So it ruins the aesthetic of it. So definitely, uh, so this guy's just gonna keep growing. He's gonna fill this space right here. And so is this one. He's on his totem right now. But as soon as he's off of that totem, again, he's gonna want a trail. So don't feel that it, you always have to have something hanging. You don't wanna, if you don't wanna create holes on your ceiling, totally fine, you don't have to do that. But so I just wanna show you another option that it could actually come this way up and then create that uh, vertical garden for you. Um, the, this little guinea right here though, I just wanna to talk to you a little bit about it. Um, it's mostly from like uh, Malaysia, uh, Southern Thailand area. 
So any kind of aerobics are, are going to want some kind of bright light because that's how they grow. So I would not recommend them for if you have a like a north facing window or even a east might not be sufficient enough. So definitely a bright area, not so much a full sun beaming on them, but definitely they want a bright area. So that's the thing with some of these trailers. They just tend to want a little brighter area. But if you have just a dark space and you still want to create it, that's why I want to to, to get you to the option of the silk flowers or silk uh, plants, just to kind of give you that as well. So you don't feel left out. Um, but this is definitely something that you can do um, just to, to create that. I think maybe like a little hanging one right here would definitely work. I think I'll put that one in right now. By like creating your own little jungle. And again, it could be a mirror. It could be something else that you have there in the center. But I just want you to kind of relate it to something that you have at your home. So how can you bring this look on there? So um, just make sure that again, whatever the vessels that you're using that you know you really like, that they really go with, um, complement your house. Because they could look nice here, but when you go home, it might not be um, as nice. So make sure that you're investing in something like that, um, just because you, you get to enjoy it so much when it comes to a vertical garden. Um, I'm gonna hang this little orange guy back up just so I can, You'll see the, the colors just pop a little bit more well, between the pots and the painting. Um, and that's what you want to create. You want to create things that kind of will complement each other. Um, so I already have some volume here. I would definitely put something right here as well um, when it comes to it. But don't feel like you have to go so heavy, even if it's just three, which I think it's a great number. Um, odd number is always good when you're trying to create a, a mass of something. So three, five, seven, whatever it is that, that you want, just try to stay within those numbers. Um, when you get to even numbers, it might look too matchy matchy. And so it doesn't look as natural. So that's what you want to create something that just looks like, um, you know, when you come in here, you know, I always try to go with the natural flow of things. So, so that's why you want to make sure that you get something that's going to be good, okay for your plants. Uh, but definitely you can create with um, as many things, again, herb gardens, uh, berry gardens, if you even will. Um, but other than that, trying to make sure that I got to everything I wanted to show you. Um, I hope you have questions for me, definitely. Um, it, it tends to go naturally for me to try to put these together because I'm constantly working with plants. So, but if you have any concerns, you know, we have great staff that, you know, have a, a, an idea of design. So they're able to help you create the look that you're going for. We have uh, tons of pots, tons of colors. So, you know, your options are endless when you're trying to create um, a a little vertical wall, a vertical garden for yourself, you know. Uh, I think uh, adding a, a chair right here, so if you want to be surrounded by this, I think it would be awesome. You know, you want to read a book here, or, you know, whether you're strolling on your social media, on your phone, it, it doesn't matter. But I think creating a space like this for yourself or just being able to look at it I, I definitely will have an impact in your home. I think you'll definitely enjoy it. Um, but for the most part, I think, I think we got... I got most of the ideas out. Again, you know, when I do it, it's just more naturally than actually trying to talk on steps by steps. So let, let me get to some of your questions right now. Let's okay. see where. How do you prevent the soil from falling out? Well, this is actually, that's why I use the moss. So you see that I'm standing this guy upright. So I'm not going that high up with the soil. You know, like you don't go all the way up to the top of your of it. So I have enough space where I'm able to push in the Spanish moss. And that's what's actually helping keep the soil and the plant in place. Um, and once it starts growing in there and starts rooting within there, it's gonna have a better grasp of the actual container um, once it's actually settled in. But I'm standing this guy up and I barely planted him this morning. So good question. Oh yeah. Is, is Spanish moss organic? Um, it is originally when moss is picked out, it is organic. The only thing is though that they go through a process sometimes they dye them. So if you can get fresh moss, uh, which you could get at a, a florist, I've used fresh moss, I absolutely love it. Holds moisture very well. Um, some of the ones that are bagged have dye in it. So if you have an issue with that, then I recommend 
that you go to your local florist and you get live moths and, and it was going to work just as well on there. So you don't have to use the Spanish moss. Spanish moss usually is like a grayish color um, naturally, almost like you'll see, imagine a swamp and then all those little things are hanging. That's what naturally Spanish moss looks like. If it comes in a different color, like this green right here, then it was processed. It, it has some kind of dye to it. So I know good. So you can do this with herbs too when it gets gets closer to springtime? Um, yes, I actually, you, you could start probably now seeding some of these guys if you want to start from seed. Um, uh, definitely you can get in, you know, they germinate within a couple of weeks, some of, some of them. So I think you, if you get a good collection of uh, ones that germinate at the same time, I think you can create a great garden for herbs. So you don't have to wait till spring. Spring is usually when you'll see most of them. All uh, they like the ones I used. Uh, we just got a fresh bash. It was they were organic. They're they're pretty much almost gone. But um, you you can use the fresh ones or you could use the seeded ones. But I don't think you have to wait till spring. I think you, you if you started in your kitchen and you got some good lighting, that's the thing. It's just because it's winter, we're not getting as much light. And herbs, they, you know, for them to grow, you know, you're going to want some light. So that's the only thing right now about herbs. But you can get them started. You can start germinating, definitely. Um, Carol mentioned that she came in late. And I wanted to tell you guys that these webinars do go up on YouTube afterwards. So if you do want to catch the beginning, if you missed it, um, check on there. But she asked, how do you water the plant in the rectangular pot? So this is a good question. So do a couple things. You can either miss it again. I would take it off your wall. You do not want to damage your wall. I'm, I cannot stress that enough. I would just take it off. Um, this guy, I think, would be fine uh, me spritzing it, and it's going to retain that moisture rather than me trying to throw so much water in there. If you feel that one is needing more water than the other, you could definitely just go in there with like a thinner uh, water watering can and try to get more to the actual root of it rather than around it that's not what you want um but a lot of these guys can definitely like these calatheas you know they'll and even the ivy would definitely benefit from just getting a little mist but you could also just lay it flat i would just take it to the tub lay it flat add a little bit to it let it leave it alone for a while when you stand it up just make sure nothing's stripping down make sure it's nice and dry before you put it back on your wall okay um, do you have a list of the plants and their requirements? We can send that afterwards. Yeah, well, I have a lot of plants, so I'm not sure which one it is you're, you're interested in. Most of what I have here, I did not mess with cactuses or succulents, guys. Most of the plants that I have here are love humidity. So they're, they're going to be a little bit of a step up from, you know, your regular easy to care for plant. These are not your snake plants. These are not anything like that. Your CZs where you can just ignore them. Um, they're, for you to get this live action that these plants are providing for you, you're going to have to kind of maintain them just a little bit more. Um, so I'm a, feel free. I have agonias, calatheas, ferns is definitely something that I use a lot of. Um, and then the pothos. The pothos was the first one that I showed you when I put in the macrame thing. So this is another pothos that's actually growing right here. Um, so definitely I can give you a list of them. But um, and when you come in and get your plants here, we do have care sheets for each plant and yes. our staff can help you. Um, oh, yeah. With each, yeah. Each so plant. if there's one that you feel that you need more information on, we do have sheets that, you know, our sales team can definitely print out for you and um, go home feeling confident. Mm -hmm. um, is there an alternative to the totem for the for the pulse? Yes, you can do uh, trailings um, almost like I can't. I don't think you can see the skinny here. Um, but he's almost like uh, like the trailers that you see up for outdoor, you know, for your roses, for things like that. Definitely, you could use one of those because uh, this is what this guy has. We also have um, plastic holes too that you know they're meant just for support reasons. So you you also can use that. The totem is just more natural because it has moss, so it adheres to it very easily. Um, when you start putting other products on there that are not really natural, sometimes you know. They don't, they don't gravitate, they don't hold to it, they don't stick to it as well. So that's why um, the totem uh, works pretty well. But you could definitely use any kind of other wooden trailer to, to get it going through that direction that you want, definitely. Uh, someone said, are recordings of past classes available? Yes, they are all on YouTube. The only things that are not on our YouTube are our paid workshops. So any webinar you can find on there. Yes. Um, did I ask this already? What containers could be used for an outdoor vertical painting? For our planting, planting. planting. Um, we do uh, get some of these that already have holes in them. Um, the ones for, 
therefore outside are heavier. So this guy is pretty light um, because he's going to be just hanging in the wall inside. When it comes to the outside ones, they just tend to be a little heavier because of, you know, you're putting them in brick, you're putting them in um, your siding, you're putting them in, in something that that's just a little bit heavier. So that's the difference between the outside ones are usually already have the drainage. So you could just get to your hose and, and water it so much easier if, if that's what you're looking for. Um, and I know our landscaping too department, you know, they do do grand walls as well. So if you're looking for like a special installation, we can definitely help you with our landscape department on that. I have a folding screen that has some pierced scrolled metal. I would love to hang plants from that. What kind of hooks could I use? Um, is this supported? I'm thinking a screen is it's by itself. So is there anything that you could support it? I'm afraid that you're going to tilt over on either side of where you plant. Um, if you're going to do real plants, you just, I would do a screw. You want something that's going to be able to support that because you got to understand what soil is heavy. So by itself, your plant, you know, if it's little, it's fine. But once you put water in there, it tends to be heavy. So you got to make sure that your screen is supported so it's not tipping over. But I think uh, regular screws or even some of these, these are mostly for outside. The ones that you see that I've used here are mostly for your outdoor baskets. Again, because those are heavier, this is like really rough iron. Um, I think you could get smaller ones. I think you'll be totally fine for a screen. Um, I wouldn't go heavy on the nail too on the screen because they're not that thick anyway. Um, what about live wreaths? Live wreaths for, uh, for vertical, it, you could definitely do a live wreath. Um, I would start sometimes, you know, you, they have the, the moss wreath already, you know, the, the circle already made, and then you can go in there and start planting. Or sometimes, you know, we have just the metal part, and then you have to actually go in there and attach it with your moss. Um, so it's, it's a lot more work if you're looking to create that. Um, I've done it before. They're beautiful. Um, and if, you, if you're looking for that as a vertical planting, um, try to get something that's going to grow some more. I would love to see that. I never even thought about putting a wreath, but I think, you, you know, try to find something that's going to give you that like peperomias or something that's going to trail off. Or unless you, even if you do it as a silk, you know, try to add something else so it just doesn't look like an exactly square wreath. You know, you, you want a little bit of a body to it. Um, I think this was a follow-up on the herbs question, but what about lettuce? Lettuce. Lettuce is fine. Lettuce is actually one of the uh, first vegetables to come out because of the weather. So uh, if you ever try finding lettuce in June, July, you're not going to find it. Lettuce is in the colder weather. So you're going to find it in the beginning of spring and at the end of fall. So lettuce is a perfect one to start. You could do a whole little, you know, your little lettuce bowl. Go for it. It definitely can work right now. Uh, you mentioned a Hoya plant. Can you tell us more about it? Okay, sure. Let me, let me get you the Hoya. Here it is. All right, here's a Hoya. So Hoyas come in a lot of different varieties. Um, you get a good amount of traders. I just want to get them out of the macrame so you can see them a little bit better. Uh, I believe this one's a Crimson Queen. Um, there are good trailers. Um, they want to be in a, a little bit drier. They're not like a humidity kind of person. They're, they're, they're not wanting to sit in... Um, water for so long. So that I would definitely let it go dry before you water it again. But I just love the the effects of the trailing that it does. And it does bloom um, ever so often in its season. It will bloom for you some really small, beautiful flowers. Um, let me just show you this guy. Like why I picked them. Like, isn't that beautiful? Like, look at the new growth that's coming in. It has a little pink to it right there. Nice little var variegation. Um, we get some there called Hindu rope Hoya, uh, the Kerry Hoya. Um, definitely, it, it, I, I'm a collector of Hoyas, I'm not gonna lie. I have at least um, eight of them at home. Um, and there's so many more that I wanna add to my collection. But these guys are just, you know, they don't really grow as big. They're not like a fern or they're gonna give you that volume up here. They're more just gonna give you more of their these little traders and legs here, sorry. These little traders right here, that's what they're really gonna grow at. So that's why I like them for a vertical because they're just gonna keep going. Like, look at that. So we just got him in, but once he's full, he's gonna be beautiful. And if he's blooming for you, then you're gonna get those little buds all around there. So um, definitely just let it go dry before you water your Hoya. 
Um, are all these plants available right now? Yes, because I went and I got them all this morning. I, I um, or yesterday actually, I went and I picked them up from our glass house. So nothing here I ordered specifically. I literally just went into the glass house and picked them out. So right now we have our sale, so we are stocked. So this is honestly the best. The, the sale ends tomorrow. So this is the weekend you want to come in and try to get a lot of these guys because we don't carry as much, you know, right now they're all over the sales floor um, for you to kind of look at just so you can see how you can put plants in your own living scape is what I wanted to create. So when you go out there and you see uh, plants all, all around on the sales floor, um, that's what I was trying to do. I wanted you to how can this work in my house? That was my motivation for it. So yeah, definitely come in and, and get these plants. Yep. What else? Yeah. Um, what about the hanging pots without saucers? Without saucers. So some of these guys did come with, um, they do come oh, with sorry. drainage. Watering them. That's it. That, that was a fault. She said about watering them. Watering them. If they have a saucer already, so you're good to go. You can water. It, it'll catch all that. These guys, they do have drainage, but when you, if they don't have a saucer. So you're going to have to get this guy off because what he's going to do, he's just going to water the bottom of your macrame. Um, that's where the water is going to fall. So you're going to have to get him off of the macrame to actually water him. Um, if not, um, you're just going to just keep damage. You know, you're going to water. It's not going to break. It's not going to damage. But after a while, it will it will get damaged. Um, so I just take it off and water it that way. What is that wall container made of? I think this one. This one right here, I believe it's uh, tin. It's really light. Like, like if you were here, it's not like a heavy metal at all. So that's what I'm saying. It's not heavy. Um, so that's why I like it. Usually the ones that are very light are the ones for inside. The ones that become heavier, those are the ones that you want for outside. Because you don't want a heavy container to just rip off your wall. So they, they tend to use lighter materials. Or I would recommend that you use lighter materials for your house, definitely. Um, can Chalet make a custom vertical arrangement for me? Uh, we do have, um, it's called Chalet Signature. So we do have designers that um, you can come in just, you know, if you, you pick a pot and you know they can recommend the flowers for you or if you or if you know that hey I, I want Hoyas or whatever it is that they will customly make that for you. So they of course there is a charge for that. But um yeah we do have designers that will create whatever it is that you're looking for. Yep. And if you do have an existing pot they can do that too. But if you want to pick out one here um both work. Yeah yeah so you could definitely just bring yours. We have a lot of customers that bring their own and we just kind of recreate it each season. I would think that the top plants would dry out before the bottom plants in that vertical wall planter. Am I wrong? Uh, no, I, 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 I would say no, just because when you water it, you're not watering it this way. So where it's going to go that way. When you water it, you're going to water it this way. And you're going to let that water set before you pick it up again. Because when you pick it up, you don't want water kind of spilling off because that, again, is going to damage your wall. So don't do that to yourself. Water it this way, it will evenly get watered if you do it this way. Let it dry for a while. Once once you see there's no water seeping out, then it's ready to go back on the wall. Is there a liner inside? Uh, no, I, that's why I used the stones. You saw me use these little guys right there. So no, um, I, I see why you're asking for the liner just to kind of prevent the, the water. You could definitely line it up. Um, I, I chose not to. I think this metal will definitely take the water and it might even give me some little- um, yeah, She wants to know if it'll rust too. It will rust. That's what. That's exactly what I was getting at. I wanted to to create something else. This is very clean for me personally. I wanted to, to have more of a rustic effect. So uh, water will do that to this guy eventually. Can you use a water spray? Yes. You could, um, again, it, it is your wall. <laughs> so if you're gonna just spray on it, uh, water, uh, you, I would be very cautious about that um, because all you're doing is just more spraying out here. Make sure you're getting in the roots of the actual plants. You, you, wanna, you wanna get in there. Let me just pick this guy up. You wanna make sure you're, you're getting in there of the plant, not just around it. That's not, not gonna help it. So. Um, what else you got? Is there any weight limit on the pot plant and plants because there are because there are hanging plants? The weight limit you're gonna have to do a little research for your house. So are you putting it in a, a support beam? Uh, make sure that those screws that you're using can can hold a certain weight. You don't want little thin nails. 
um, that are going to just fall off. You know what I mean? Taking consideration after you water it, it's still going to have some weight to it. So I would definitely, what I would recommend, and that, it's not so much on the metal, it's where you're putting um, this guy on your wall. Is your wall able to support it? Is it just drywall that's just going to fall off? And so that that's where you going to want to take that in consideration. But um, it's definitely in the tools uh, and the mechanics that you're going to use. So I would just make sure that you're getting the, the nails and or screws that can support a heavier weight. Um, I think we've kind of gone over this with the watering, but my hanging plant dribbles water through the bottom. Any remedies? Your hanging plant, it, it just falls right there. So that's what I mean by what you, I would take it off of the hanging thing to water it outside. Um, that's a tricky thing with these guys of, of vertical anything is the fact that when it comes to watering, it's more maintenance. It's not like a, your plant is just kind of sitting there. This is something that you actually have to take an effort to actually make sure that, you know, you're taking care of them. So you're always having to take them out. So if you don't want to, if you want to avoid all that, honestly, find yourself a pot with the cleanser ready with a saucer or just buy a saucer. We do sell saucers by themselves. So if you just feel like you need to do that, or sometimes um, we have the plastic liners too. So you could just use that. I mean, there's like only 50 cents or a dollar. You could use that liner, water it. And once it's done, once it's done drying a little bit, um, then take the the tray off and you're fine. So those are other ways that you can kind of cheat around in. Um, after the presentation, can you send the YouTube link? Yes, I will send the yep. YouTube link to um, everyone who yes, registered. Yes, she, she, she definitely will. Um, last question I see is, can you use orchids too for a highlight? Oh yes, I, I definitely love orchids. I think if, um, especially we, we sell the little ones, they're like 12 99 those little orchids. Um, because the way that an orchid falls naturally is going to droop this way. It is not something that stands up that way. So I think definitely that could add some drama to it. Um, go a little higher just so you could have that effect. If you go a little low, I feel like you might miss it. So go a little higher with a flat, such a sensitive flower that way. Um, just remember that after it blooms out for you, that it's going to take a while for that to bloom to come back again. So you might have to um, change it up a bit. Um, another thing that I did that I forgot to mention is um, sometimes if you don't want to plant them in there, I literally was able to fit the pot. I just trimmed a little bit of the lip and I literally stuck some of these guys directly in there. So I'm able to take them back out. So if you're looking to do a seasonal thing or something like with orchids that it's not going to stay in bloom for such a long time, um, you can easily just pop it out and replace it with something else. Are we getting a question? Um, it would be great if you had a virtual class with all the product available. Oh my God. Um, like all the product and plants or planters, because you have no idea how much we product we have. Yeah. It's, it's really it out. definitely it's something that you really want to just experience when you come in here because there's so much of it. The, our, the plants that I got. I mean, I got a, a semi uh, earlier this week, so you have no idea how many different plants to, to show. Um, that would be a very long virtual class. <laughs> um, what else? I think, oh, can the air plants be used in the vertical gardening? Oh, yes, definitely. I think that's easier too if you want to go with air plants because that you could just um, spray them right on there. Just be, again, be careful with your wall. Uh, but they don't need so much water. They don't, they, they don't need to do that. Or you could, well, for me, the way that I take care of air plants, my air plants, I literally just take them out from wherever they are. Put them, in, put them in a bowl of water for a half hour. Then after that, just kind of shake off all the excess water and then I pop them back in. Um, and that's the easiest way for me to, to, to do air plants and it's just perfectly fine that way. Um, succulents as well? Succulents as well? Yes, succulents as well. Succulents probably be easier um, because you're not, A, you're not watering them that much and B, they don't even want that much water. So you kind of want them to be in a more of a dry state. Um, so you're rarely going to water this guy it's just ever, ever so often that they might need um, that. The thing with succulents is um, I like them when you see them from the top. I mean, right here, you definitely will see them in a wall. Um, you can see the real sets of them. The only thing is that I, what I don't like about this is that when they get leggy, they start stretching out. So just make sure that you're keeping an eye on your succulents if, if that's what you want to use. But I mean, this can be translated to so many options. I don't want you to feel that this is the only way to do it. 
Um, I chose these plants because one is I like them. B is the <laughs> movement that I wanted to offer you um, when it comes to a living wall because the, or living vertical, anything is, is you want that kind of natural movement. So that's why I chose the plants, but you definitely can do this with at whatever you like. If you like cactus and you want to hang them on your macrame, by all means, you can definitely do that. I have cacti hanging in one of my displays right now. So uh, your, your options are endless. And that's why, you know, just come on in. Um, just come on in and then uh, we can definitely help you out with that. Sorry. Um, I saw someone said, uh, is asking about a workshop. We did, we don't have one planned, but that is a great idea. So thank you for the feedback. We'll definitely consider that. Um, what is the purple leaf plant? Is it this guy you're looking at? That's a begonia. That's a Rex begonia. Isn't that beautiful? These are one of the plants. We got a good collection of Rex begonias. And that's why I wanted to offer something just a little different for you guys. Look at the texture on that. Almost gives a little luminescence on it so that's what that guy is awesome and then someone said i love your workshop Yay! we do have a february um workshop coming up on the 5th it's kind of valentine's day theme so we have a few left so check that out um grab the last spots but i think that's all our questions for today Anna. all right cool thank you so much if you do have questions that you think about later just you know send us an email Carly would definitely uh, jump on in and, and get a response for you. Yep. Um, thank you. Yay, great speaker. Uh, <laughs> hello at ShellyNursery.com can answer any of your questions. Yes, thank yes, you so definitely much. will answer that. Thank you so much, guys. Um, if you create something, I definitely want to tag us. I definitely want to see what you create. Okay, thank you so much.